So here I'm in World Machine. If you haven't watched my other videos, I recommend going through those for a better understanding. But I'm just going to set up a quick kind of mountainous terrain. I'm going to go to Generator and set up a Veronoi. This gives us some good random noise that uh, can be a good starting point for a mountain range. If we go hop into our 3D view, I can tweak these. Uh, you can also access your devices on the left here when, when you're in this view. So we double click a device to get its options. Uh, I like Veroni for mountain ridges because of these sharp, uh, sharp angles and everything. So this might look cool. I'll hop back to our device view and it's very simplest form. You can just use a generator and then an erosion and get some nice results. So I plug the output of Veronoi into erosion and I like the preset over here, classic world machine plus power. So I'm going to choose that and increase my file resolution over here with world extends and resolution. Now we want to use uh, 2048 for a nice final build. So I'll set it there and say OK. And let's just give a, let's see what this looks like here. Usually takes a few minutes, but uh, it's pretty simple so far. So hopefully it doesn't take too long. OK, so that actually took seven minutes, <laughs> a little longer than I was hoping. But here's our terrain. You can see once you have the erosion, you get some more natural looking uh, mountains. Now the actual range of this, the height range can be changed easily. So we can go into filters. Filters are a good thing to add after erosion because it won't have to recalculate the erosion. For instance, if we go to curves, plug that in and jump to our 3D view we can redistribute the height values of, of all the um, all this noise here just by drawing this line. So by default, it's set to linear. You can add kind of terraced effects just by drawing it out like this. And the nice thing is the build here would be pretty instant. Um, so I, I always think it's fun to play around with the filters after your erosion just to see what you get. Um, so that's curves, delete that. Another thing you might want to mess with is clamp. You can clamp your height ranges. So if we add one of these, you can see we can lower the, the overall height of everything, which I feel like it was a little too um, spiky, which often leads to unrealistic looking mountains if things are too, too high contrast. So I think this looks a little more natural. I'll stick with this for the demo. Now, another thing I've been doing lately that I think is a fun workflow is using Google satellite images um, to make tiling textures. And we can apply these based on height selections. So one thing, this is a shot of Hawaii. For the setup here, um, by default, you're in kind of regular Google Maps view. So you want to drop down and switch to Earth. And on the top left menu settings, we want to turn labels off. And then you can um, view the world without labels. Whoa. So um, Africa, Northern Africa has all crazy cool deserts. If you're doing a desert scene, I'd recommend messing with these, making some textures out of them. So to do that, find kind of a decent area of, of information and do print screens. We'll pop these in Photoshop and create a new file, control N and control V and just paste that in there. But do a couple, try to find textures that might make, might blend nicely together. So for instance, we have this desert area and we can maybe fade it to these grassy plains. This might look cool with some of these veins shooting through there. So we'll print screen that. And you can literally do as many of these as you want. And uh, it's pretty easy to tile these. We'll tile these both for use, use with World Machine and also later for Unreal or CryEngine. Uh, but 
first we'd want to crop these into a usable texture so I can go to my crop tool and type in 512 px by 512 px to set up our crop size so now that that's set even though we're changing this size here it's our final image is still going to be 512. Um, the reason I chose 512 over 1024 is just because we're, we kind of had limited space based on our print screen. I didn't want it to have to up res anything. So here's our two textures that we can mess with. And to tile these, usually I'll have a lot more. So I'll make a folder called source where all my uh, textures that I'm going to get ready to tile are. And then as I'm tiling them, I'll bring one up above the source folder. I'll duplicate it with Control J, hide the top layer, and it will offset the bottom layer. So filter, other, offset, and 256 by 256 because it's half of 512. So we get the typical kind of seam. These are the outside. Remember, this is these are the outside pixels inverted so now we're looking at the border that wasn't necessarily lined up and the whole idea here is the pixels on the inside of course those are those are fine those blend nicely so what we want to do is take the pixels on the inside and use those to also clean up the uh, the, the seam from the outside so right, we could just clone brush and that's quick um, but we could also do, we can parent this top layer to an empty layer by holding Alt and clicking in between them. Now the top layer is only going to show through wherever we paint. So basically it's a non-destructive way to tile things. Now we can just paint along this middle seam. Basically we're making a cross. If we hide the top layer, this is what we're painting. And you can use brushes that kind of match this style of terrain. Like this one might be more useful for like a tree bark or plaster or something. But we don't want to mess with the outside pixels because those are already intact. So we don't want to change those. So there we go. Now we have a little band-aid that's going to tile this. And we can save this out. You can just use targets for these. Call this one desert. Twenty four is fine because we're not using an alpha. And the whole point of this workflow is we just keep our little mask there and then we can move a new texture up and tile it in just a couple seconds. So we parent the top, the one that's not offset, we parent that to the mask and then we offset the bottom. And then we just tiled the, this texture in just a second. So we'd save this. Like I said, we're not really saving time until you're doing like 20 of these all at once. So I recommend going on Google, just finding all every cool looking satellite image and dropping it all on a file and just making yourself a library quickly. So there we go. We have grass and a desert. Now we can check how these blend together back in World Machine. And what we need is a first a way to separate. We need a mask to to tell the um, to tell World Machine where we want certain textures. So for that, we'd use a selector, and I'm going to use a height selector, which is a real basic way to start the mask. So we plug in the last thing that's affected our height, which is the clamp, because that changed our height values, and then we can double click our height um, select height. And we can adjust the height, height values that we're trying to select, the range here. You can also adjust the fall off for more contrast. And sometimes it's not going to make sense until you visualize it on your, your mesh. 
So we'll start out with this and see what this selection gives us. Now we want to add a way for it to choose which texture to add based on the height. So under combiner, the middle option is a chooser and that just does the exact thing I mentioned. So we're choosing from A and B based on C, which is our height selection. So we go to generator and we need to add files, which are the textures we just made. So I got a file input, double click this and we load, hopefully it'll be in our recent files, we'll load desert. And we need these to be RGB, interpret as RGB. So it interprets this as color rather than a height map. And we can adjust the tiling by dragging it to the left for more. I recommend 2K or around 2K for these. Um, it looks like it's really repetitious, but that covers your whole map, so you're not going to see that tiling. Now we say OK. So we have our desert one set up. We'll plug that into A. We can duplicate this, control C, control V, and we'll just load out the other grass file here. Drop that in. Now you see we have both textures blending based on our height selection. Now we need a way to preview this over our geometry. So for that, under output, um, you can find overlay view. This lets us overlay color on top of our height map. So we want to check our height field goes into the top slot here. You can see that by saying height field, height field. And we want to plug in the clamp because that's the last thing that's affected our height field. So we route this straight across and then the color we plug in the bottom. Now if we preview the 3D and build this, it'll calculate our new textures. So there we go, we get a kind of a much more natural looking landscape based on our satellite imagery. So, um, and because these both these textures were kind of close to each other in the actual real world, it adds that believability. Like I feel like these belong together. So romantic, true, true match. Now we can go back to device view and if we want to get a little fancier with our mask, we can try a different selector. Uh, for one, we can use slope. So if we look at slope, we'll also plug this in. And you can see the, the slope gives you kind of the height information, but also based on the actual angle, the slope of certain surfaces. So if we plug that in instead, we'll probably get a more interesting looking uh, blend. There we go. Which this would probably make more sense um, based on slope, not just a straight linear height change, but based on the angle of these slopes. So grass might grow up up until a certain degree and then fade out. Um, so we, we'll try this. The only issue we want to be concerned about with this is sometimes the slope selection creates a little bit too much noise. In this case, these textures blend well together, but uh, this in, if you have really high contrast materials, then um, it's going to appear pretty uh, noisy up close in the, in the terrain editor or in the map editor, but I think this will work nicely. So now we need a way to get these textures out. So we go to device view again, and under output, this is the same spot we got the overlay view. We'll have bitmap output and height output are the ones we're gonna be using. So height output is anything grayscale, we'll use height output. So the last thing again, that adjusted our height was clamp, so we'll plug that right in. And for the height map that we actually feed to the terrain, this works in both CryEngine and Unreal 4, is RAW 16. You need a 16-bit high-precision image. Otherwise, you'll get stair-step kind of jagged results for your height map. It'll look like Minecraft. Um, so that's what happens if you do 8-bit. 
that's why I try to keep all my terrain creation started in a world machine or, or a program like this, because you can always make sure it's nothing drops down to 8-bit. So we have it set to raw 16. In the past, PGM also worked with CryEngine. In the past, PGM also worked with CryEngine. Um, but now it accepts raw 16. So I'm going to set my output path. Put it in terrain. Height new. That's my new demo. Save that. And then we write output to disk and say yes. Now this is it's pretty stupid, but it gives you an error saying that it's written successfully. So we say okay. Thank you. Okay. So we have our height map. Now really the most important thing that we need now is slope. So I can copy this height output and save out slope. And set this so we can say slope. Uh, I'm going to cancel because I want this is just needs to be a bitmap. Always a good naming convention to call it new. Psych. Okay, so we have our slope and our height. Now, in the past, I would save out this and be use this as a kind of mega diffuse texture. So you can, if you wanted to save this out for CryEngine, you can just plug in your RGB and save out a bitmap specify, and it gives you the diffuse. I'm not going to be doing that though, uh, because we're going to recreate uh, these materials based on our slope selection right into um, right in Unreal. So that's we really have as much as we need. This was mostly to make sure these textures look good, a way to preview it, and I think they go good together. So it gives me something to try to recreate in Unreal.